Welcome to Get the Facts, the program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm Theodore Henry. For decades, countless Jamaicans have taken advantage of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security's Overseas Employment Program. They've used it to secure livelihoods, allowing them to take care of their families. But has the program lived up to expectations? Has it become stagnant? Is it still a viable option for job-seeking Jamaicans? We will find out all of that today in our conversation with Minister of Labor and Social Security, Pernell Charles Jr., who is here to shed some light on the program and its benefits. Thank you for joining us, Minister. Thank you for the invitation. As always, let's start with some definitions. What is the Overseas Work Program? So as you see, it's a program where several Jamaicans, those who are eligible, uh, will have an opportunity to work, particularly in Canada or the USA. Yes. Uh, we have two primary streams, the agricultural stream or the hospitality. So it's not just farm work? No. Because that's how, that's how we hear it, you know, the overseas well, farm work program. What we have done is, for us in Jamaica, whether it's a farm work, to mean everything. Right. But there is farm work, which relates particularly to the agricultural stream, mm -hmm. uh, where we have more than 9,000 farm workers in Canada um, and under 5,000 in the U.S., um, and we have the hospitality stream, hospitality program, which is primarily in the U.S., which of that 5,000, um, a chunk of them are on the hospitality program. Only a few yes. are in Canada. Ah, these numbers you're mentioning, are they seasonal? Are they there all the time? What's the division? Well, it's the seasonal agricultural workers program that has the bulk of our farm workers that are in Canada. But you do have a low-skilled program which can see persons um, staying for almost up to 24 months. Um, but primarily, it is a seasonal program for both the U.S. and Canada. Um, and it makes sense because these are, these are countries where you have changing in the weather. Right. So when the weather is when it's too cold, um, you don't expect for them to have high, a high peak in terms of farming activity. So, Minister... Could you help us understand how and why this program was developed? So decades ago, um, Jamaica was actually the only partner in these programs, in the farm work program right. um, for Canada and also for the U.S. And now, for instance, you have 88 countries that you can choose from, that Canada can choose from wow. um, in terms of workers. Right. Just to show you the evolution. But it started out really as a partnership where Jamaica needed employment opportunities, opportunities for our Jamaicans who were skilled, um, competent in farming to be able to make more money for themselves and their families. And Canada and USA both had a challenge yes. where they had land, they had market, but they didn't have the skilled workers to be able to, to utilize their resources and maximize the potential um, of their resources. So we've seen where you have that mutual benefit. Yeah. We have workers that want work. <laughs> they need workers to do work. Right. Um, and we put that together in a memorandum of understanding, which is constantly evolving as well. So it's a legacy program, but every year we sit down with our partners, with the stakeholders, and we go through the terms and conditions of these agreements to make sure that we're meeting the standards that are acceptable, acceptable to us mm -hmm. um, to protect the rights and the welfare of the workers that we send both to the USA and to Canada. We definitely should talk some more about that bit. But before we do, before we do, you have mentioned the US and Canada. Are those the only two partners? Only two partners in relation to these particular programs in the US. Um, we know that it's called the H2A, which is agricultural, and the H2B, right. which is the hospitality programs. And in Canada, we have the larger portion of Jamaican workers on the farm work program. Understood, understood. For the purpose of information for our audience, what other benefits? Are there any attendant benefits with the work itself going on the overseas program? Well, I think primarily, you know, for most farm workers, they will tell you that the program provided them with um, a higher revenue opportunity. So they were able to go up for a short period, whether it is two months to eight months, mm -hmm. um, make as much as they can. 
um, and to provide for their families and their communities back home. Um, while they are there, they are also covered in terms of protection um, for health and other standards that are required for the various countries, Canada and the U.S. We provide a significant service of support to them through our liaison services, our liaison officers in right. both U.S. and Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and through those services, we make sure that they have access to bank accounts, um, to all that they need to be able to, uh, to navigate the system um, and, the, and the new environment that they're placed in, whether it is in Canada or the U.S. Okay, okay. You had mentioned the memorandum of understanding between the partners. And um, admittedly, we've heard some not so positive news about farm work. How, how would you assure us that work is being done to ensure that the terms are equitable and people are taken care of? Well, I tell you, no. It's, it's the old age... Um, the old adage that negative news spreads faster. That is true. There's much more positive news than there is negative. Oh, yeah. But we do have to acknowledge the negative. Um, and, you know, what we have done in the last year and a half is to send teams of experts from our management committee that oversees the programs to do direct observation. Mm. Um, it was done before I became minister through Minister Carl Samuda and his team. Yes. And when I came, we did another observation tour as well, just to make sure that we were interacting with the government officials, the farm workers, the farmers, and seeing for ourselves what's taking place in terms of the living and working conditions. And in large part, the analysis shows that the large proportion of farm workers find that the conditions are beyond just acceptable, but they're actually good conditions. However, yes. we do have areas where there is significant need for improvement. We've targeted those areas, and we've done a number of things, including improving how we communicate, providing more access and portals and numbers and WhatsApp numbers for farm workers to anonymously give us information. Uh -huh. We've increased the number of liaison officers. Mm -hmm. We've opened new liaison offices. In in the partner in nations. In particularly in Canada. Um, and we are ensuring that the standards, the minimum standards that are required for employers in terms of preparing the environment, living and working condition, is met. Yes. So I have met personally with the, my counterpart minister um, and other ministers, the association that deals with the employers themselves and farm workers, um, just to make sure that any Jamaican that ventures into these programs is protected, their rights are respected, um, and that their well-being and welfare is taken care of. Ah, I know that our audience and those who may be interested in the program are heartened by the knowledge that this is not oversight from a distance. No, so we appreciate that, Minister. We're going to have more on this discussion with the Minister of Labor and Social Security, Pernell Charles Jr. when we return. You don't want to miss it, so just stick with us through the break. Welcome back to Get the Facts. Just last year, there was a rise in the number of persons who went to Canada to engage in the agricultural initiative, indicating that it is having a beneficial impact on the lives of participating Jamaicans. So, Minister, who can apply for the farm program? So, we ask that persons meet particular criteria. You have to be functionally literate and numerate. Of course, we want you to be able to read. Um, so, if you are on the farm and you see a bottle, you will know whether it is dangerous or not, right? Um, you have to be competent. So, so they test the experience that you have in farming 
Um, that's why we ask persons, do you have even a RADA ID? Mm -hmm. um, you have to be physically fit mm -hmm. because it's farm work. So yeah. it is hard work. Right. Um, and you have to meet certain age criteria, usually below the age of 45. Um, of course, we, we have partnerships with employers. So there are times when employers actually come to Jamaica and work with our team, and they have particular criteria outside of that for, f to meet their needs. Understood. Because remember, the farm work is a wide range, a wide spectrum of work that is done. So it's right. not all persons that are going to be out on a farm. Some may be in a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Some may be in the, in the packaging area. Different kinds of crops Different as well. kinds of crops. Right. So dependent on that, you may have slight adjustments um, in terms of what the requirements are. But generally, those are the things. You meet the age criteria, um, the reading component, the physically fit, and the knowledge that you should have in terms of farming. You answered the who, and uh, let's follow that up with the how. How do I apply? So, as it is now, we rely on the elected officials in each constituency right. to identify um, the um, eligible applicants. Uh, matter of fact, I had a forum with the members of parliament to make sure that that selection and orientation process is a little bit more effective. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have tried to pass on the knowledge to them that if we get a better group of persons to select from, then right. more of them will get through. Ah. All right? Yes. So, so, so we work with the MPs. They are given nomination forms and they're asked to identify persons in the communities who meet that criteria. Those persons come in, an interview is done, uh, utilizing our liaison officers and other experts. Yes. Um, and from that interview, the persons that, that are successful are then pushed through the process. Remember now, importantly, which I should have perhaps said before, you must also not have any criminal record. Ah, that's important. So, so yes. all of those criteria plus no criminal record, mm -hmm. and then you're pushed forward now into the, uh, the visa application process. And that's out of our hands, um, but the U.S. or Canadian embassies will interview you and go through that, that process of evaluation to determine whether you are fit to receive a visa. Mm -hmm. And after that, you're then placed with one of the employers or farms in either Canada or US, and you wait your turn um, to be called. Mm. What's the time frame we're looking at here? Well, it really, it really varies. Yeah. Um, and with COVID having occurred, what we saw is that there was a pool of persons who were not called. Uh. So, so, for instance, we, are, we pull from that pool first. So somebody might have done their interview a year ago, gone through and has been told you're successful and they're waiting to be called. So usually you find that you have that year, for instance, uh, six months to I'd say 18 months period mm -hmm. of waiting for you to be called on by an employer. Remember, and it's significant for Jamaicans to understand, we in Jamaica do not determine immediately how many persons will go to Canada or to the U.S. Has it to meet depends. the need. Ah. Ah. And so the employers yeah. have to have a need that we are filling. Right. That is why our liaison service and the management committee are critical because they not only liaise with farm workers, they engage with employers yeah. to make sure that we manage that relationship. If one employer in a province is pleased and happy with the work that is taking place from those competent, hardworking Jamaicans, it is more likely that his friend in another province will choose which country? Jamaica. Jamaica. So we manage that relationship as well to make sure that we provide an expanded amount of opportunities mm -hmm. for Jamaicans to the program. This is why we say the work of one person is going to either open or close the door for another. Mm. If you are doing good work, if you have the right attitude, if you show that you're competent and committed right. and you're not running off, right. what it will do is, is build confidence, not just in you, but in the country that you represent. Our farm workers are ambassadors. True. Many True. persons in Canada interact only with Jamaica through farm workers. Mm. So everything they know about Jamaica, everything they know about our language, our people, our culture, comes from their impression, the perception they get from how our farm workers interact with them. 
So that's, that's, it, that shows you how important it is for us to have the right persons, to orient them so they know what they're going up to. Many yes. persons go up, they, 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 they need to know. Mm -hmm. This is not the warm, warm Ocherias or Kingston you're going to. You're going right. sometimes to very cold temperatures, so you have to be prepared for that. Um, and why we ask for people who are experienced in farming is because if you're not experienced in farming and you go to go do farm work, you're going to have a shock, not just with the weather, but with the level of work and commitment that is needed yeah. to really do farm work. Right. But if you're a farmer, you know what you're getting into. Uh, you know what you're getting into. Now, uh, are there any stipends for farm workers who they're... How do we phrase it? They're no longer part of the initiative, but they still need some assistance in supporting themselves. Well, there are times when farm workers um, who might be in particular situations, whether it is an injury or other circumstances, may call on us and we utilize our public assistance program to give them support. But generally, it is expected that a, a farm worker under ordinary circumstances will go up, um, will work, um, and will be paid. And so they will be in a position when they return home to take care of themselves and take care of their family. Matter of fact, you have farm workers who have been on the program for more than two decades, three decades. Yes. Some, and they will tell you that they have sent their children to university, they have built their home, they started businesses, mm. and many of them are running farms in Jamaica. To the extent that you even have farmers, employers in Canada, that have started farms in Jamaica because of that strong relationship that they've had with their farm workers. As you mentioned, the, the good news outstrips the bad. That is so, but we have to tell it. We have to tell you it. Know, and in telling it, we also have to let people know that we're not diminishing the reality that there is some concerns. Right. Right. So our, I had a very strong meeting with my liaison officers um, when I just came in as minister. And I'm proud of the work that they're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't, these, they're out 2 a.m. sometimes at the airport just to receive our farm workers. Wow. Um, and anything that happens, they are, they are the primary and immediate response to help support our farm workers. Um, and we, we have seen in the last year improvement, improvement in the frequency and the impact of their engagement yes. um, to the extent where I believe that in the next three years, we're, we're hoping to see positive trends in terms of expansion of opportunities for Jamaicans in Canada and the US. Mm. So the, the major focus for the farm work program going forward, what would you say that is? I say the number one has to be the rights um, and, and the welfare of our farm workers. Yeah. So first and foremost is to make sure that the standards, the minimum standard, um, is acceptable. I would say secondly, we have to expand opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so that will come from strengthening the relationships that we have with all of the stakeholders, the governments, uh, the employers, the farm workers, um, to make sure that Jamaica stands out as a country of competence. And I'd say thirdly, is to make sure that we are providing um, optimum liaison services. Oh. Um, and, and I believe we are on our way in terms of orienting and, and training our officers, um, opening up new offices, and revising the process from selection to orientation to evaluation and monitoring yes. to make sure that everything that we're doing along this, this, this journey um, is as efficient and effective as possible to achieve the goal. We want Jamaicans to have opportunities that are safe, and we want this program to be sustainable. Understood, understood. Final five seconds of the interview, Minister. What do you have to say to our audience? I just want to say, listen, big up to the farm workers. You know, we want to encourage you to stick with it. We want to encourage you um, to be open um, and to communicate with us. And we want to let every farm worker uh, know that we will provide as many opportunities for you to be able to voice your concerns. And also, Thank you to our liaison officers and to the liaison services, to the management committee, to the team that is here in Jamaica doing the work, sometimes behind the scenes. Um, this is a good program for Jamaica, yes. and we look forward to expanding the program, expanding the opportunity, and expanding the benefits. 
And on that note, this has been Get the Facts. Our guest was Minister of Labor and Social Security, Pernell Charles Jr. Thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm Theodore Henry. Take good care.